Welcome back to an el another education. I'm glad to have you here. And today we're going to talk about Machiavellianism. It's a pretty big word. We don't talk about it much either, but it's quite important. Machiavellianism, as we'll learn, is a part of the dark triad. What is the dark triad? Let's get into it. This information comes from uh, psychcentral.com. So that's what I'm reading this from. This is my source of my information. You are free to look it up yourself and do your own investigating if you need. But I don't think it's a topic we hear about much and discuss much. And I would like to discuss it because I think it could be eye-opening. This is not a diagnosis about anybody. It may sound like someone you know. It might not. It's just educating people. Don't take it personal. If it hits a nerve with you, you might want to look into it. So, I have this that I'm going to read. We're going to learn. I'm going to give you modern day examples of Machiavellianism in uh, pop culture, as in movie characters. And then also in world leaders. So what is Machiavellianism? Do you like the shadows? Me too. We're going to have a puppet show. I hope you're all doing well too. Machiavellianism is a personality trait involving man manipulativeness. There's going to be some big words in this. Deceit, cynical views towards human nature, and a cold, calculating attitude towards others. It's late. The trait was conceptualized in 1970 by Christian Gies and describes the extent to which individuals adhere to the political philosophy of Italian writer Niccolo Machiavelli, who advocated views involving cunning, deceit, and the notion that means justifies the ends. So that's important, we understand. Means justifies the ends. Familiar. <sighs> Ready for some more big words? Me too. Machiavellianism is one of the three interpersonality, Everest personality traits that collectively constitute what is known as the dark triad. What is the dark triad? The other two traits belong to narcissism and psychopathy. Let's listen carefully here. Relative to Machiavellianism, narcissism involves a grandiose, inflated view of oneself, superficial charm, deceit in the consideration of others. Comparatively, psychopathy is a personality trait involving reckless, Antisocial behavior, lying, cheating, and a callous disregard of others that may border on aggression and violence. Machiavellianism, among narcissism and psychopathy, share a constellation of features which has been referred to as the core of the dark triad. So they share very similar traits. You can be a narcissist and Machiavellian. You can be a narcissist and not a psychopath. You can be a psychopath and a narcissist. You can all just flip them up and make pancakes with them. These features include um, shallow effect and a poor emotional attachment to others. And self-focused approach to life, deceit and, em and empathy. I said that wrong. Pardon me. Deficit. Better. Deficit in empathy and low levels of honesty and humility. Hmm. Actually, it kind of sounds like the kind of world we're living in. Machiavellianism is a distinct trait on its own, however. How so? Tell me. Hmm. And this distinctiveness of that trait will be discussed below. Oh, I gotta read more. I'm sorry. We're not just gonna, like, make it easy. No, because it's not easy. It's not simple. 
The trade in Machinim... <laughs> this word is quite a tongue twister. Machin... Machinim... I'm just going to call it Mac. Is normally measured with the Mac questionnaire. And for the purpose of this article, individuals who would score highly on the questionnaire are referred to as Machiavellianisms. You could take the test, which you can look up online. The Machiavellian test, you can take it and you might see you get some points. That doesn't mean you are. You can be high Mac, I'll get my hands in here, or a low Mac. It is possible to be a very good person to have those traits. It's possible that if you're high, mm, run. Just like we all possess a bit of narcissism, but there's a healthy narcissism and a healthy narcissism. Psychopathy, I think, though, there's nothing good about that. Okay, let's get into it. Cold calculate, calculating view of others. All right. Machiavellians are strategic individuals, individuals who are willing to lie, cheat, and deceive others in order to achieve their goal. See, regular people can have that. Like anyone can have that. There's a lot of people who might score low or high on the test or not on the test that have that trait. Deceive others to achieve their goal. Due to the Machiavellian's lack of emotional attachment, a shallow experience of emotions, there may be little that holds the individual back from harming others in order to achieve their goal. So that might make you different. You still have feelings. This, in fact, is one of the reasons why Machiavellian's views and attitudes are so adverse and problematic. Whew, you're telling me. Indeed, similar to psychopaths who may harm others for enjoyment or narcissists who may harm others due to their lack of empathy, Machiavellians may manipulate, deceive others in order to advance themselves with little consideration of the emotional collateral. How to make that simple? Means justifies the end. So I have no feelings and emotion because I need to get where I need to get. I'm going to get over you any way I can. What is cold empathy and hot empathy? Have we ever heard of this before? Nope, because we're just regular folk trying to figure out all these crazies around us. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What is cold empathy and hot empathy? A distinction has been made between empathy that is cognitive and cold. And empathy, empathy that is emotional and hot. Cognitive. Emotional. Cold. Hot. Hot. <laughs> cold empathy refers to our understanding of how others may be thinking, how others act in particular situations. So you're using your brain. How are we using our brain? <laughs> and how events may unfold involving, involving certain individuals. For example, a manager may rely on cold empathy to understand the sequence of actions that may occur when they provide negative feedback to their employees, which can involve defensiveness, disagreement, and value... value uh, <laughs> don't you like watching? <laughs> Eventual acceptance of the feedback. So, they're using their head instead of their feelings. So, you get... you freak out when your boss says something to you you don't like, but it's constructive and you need to hear it? Something like that? The very same manager may also recruit hot empathy to resonate on an emotional level with their employee. So now they're using their feelings. Example. Sarah will feel frustrated and embarrassed as I tell her this feedback. So I want to be a friend uh, to be as friendly and constructive as possible. So now they're considering the person's emotional reaction, where before they were just thinking logically, I guess you could say, in a way, with their brain cognitively. That's what cognitive means. This part, this thing inside there, that mushy thing, that special little thing we got. Your brain. In the latter case, the manager's emotional resonance enables 
him or her to shape the way she thinks in order to avoid emotional harming of the employee. I think we've all had bad um, managers before. We know what it feels like if they don't invoke that emotion that they need to understand our position or how we're going to feel. Like if you get humiliated in front of your coworkers, would that be considered you, your manager used cold empathy? Not very nice. <sighs> Comparatively, a Machiavellianism manager may have a good understanding of the manner in which her employee will react, yet fail to resonate with the employee on an emotional level. So they could know better, but not act better. The result of this might be that the manager comes across as harsh, unfriendly, and may fail to realize or care about any emotional harm he might have caused. I had a boss, my first boss, and she used to like to humiliate me. She's kind of like that. She had no understanding of how people felt, and she implored deceit and, and lies and humiliation. And I was just young. I was like 18. some problems but she lacked that she was harsh and unfriendly not just with me but she would also be that way with the clients that's why the business went under <sighs> hmm this is interesting research has shown that some Machiavellians display to see oh, deficits in hot empathy Others have a good ability to understand the emotions and feelings of others, yet simply do not care. Don't you see how humans are tricky little buggers? We can't just categorize someone because they could be a whole lot of messed up. It's really complicated dealing with these kind of people because you can never really be too sure. That's we'll get into the examples later. We'll try not to make this an hour. <sighs> Significantly, a subgroup of Machiavellians have been found to bypass empathy. That is, they have a good understanding of the thoughts and feelings that may arise in others as a result of deceit, manipulation, or other ill treatment, yet fail to curtail their actions in response. Familiar. They know better, but they don't care. The lack of moral conscience in Machiavellians has been seen by um, evolutionary psychologists as evolutionary advantage and advantageous. I told you there's big words in this one. because This one's really complicated. I think it's why we don't really understand what's going on. These ones are tricky because they're using deceit. It's not so like straight in your face like narcissism. Yes, so, in the sense that these individuals may not uh, hold back by any consideration of others in the pursuit of their goals. And the question arises, however, regarding how Machiavellians are able to develop and maintain long-lasting, emotionally satisfying relationships with others if they lack this emotional ability or have little, little concern of thoughts and feelings of others. How do they maintain it? My guess is they don't. My guess, it's all deceit. The man behind the curtain, I don't think they can. If these are the tactics they employ, that's impossible. It's all just for show. This theory of mind, another interesting thing. Theory of mind refers to the ability to understand and appreciate why people think in unique ways that they do. So I think different from you and from you and you and you who are watching. Theory of mind differs from empathy and that is more broad. It refers to the goals, aspirations, desires, and contents within an individual's mind rather than their moment to moment changes in thinking and feeling. So in theory, Machiavellianism must have a reasonably good theory of mind in order to be able to understand what drives the behaviors of others. Cunning and smart. So they can manipulate these other people. 
Hmm. Research has shown, however, that Machiavellianism is negatively associated with social cooperative skills in theory of mind, which suggests that these individuals may not be as successful as understanding and manipulating others as they purport to be. So they think at first they have this theory of mind, but then the research is starting to show actually they, they don't. So they don't have the theory of mind, which is the ability to understand and appreciate why people think differently. So they would think that they understand the one way, like one train of thought for every individual. They probably really just don't care. So they're just, again, cunning and deceiving in their qualities. So while the traits of Machiavellianism may comprise a sets of belief and attitudes about manipulating others, there's no guarantee that this manipulation will be successful. So they're going to manipulate, but it doesn't mean they're in the end going to achieve manipulation of whoever they're trying to manipulate. Ain't going to stop them, though. Behavioral inhibition. According to the Gray's Enforcement Sensitivity Theory, Behavior is driven by two separate neurological systems. The behavioral activation system and the behavioral inhibition system. The behavioral activation system is associated with approach. Tendencies including extroversion, social behavior, and taking action. However, the behavioral inhibition system is associated with avoidance, tendencies such as introversion, withdrawn behavior, and thinking rather than doing. Okay. That's kind of interesting. So we have theory of mind. We have hot, cold empathy. Now we have behavioral inhibition. The two separate ones, activation system and inhibition system. This is interesting. I don't think this is going to be one video. I might have to do more. This is really interesting. Because breaking it down to like regular terms will be really hard. If at all possible. Hmm. Recent evidence shows that psychopathy and narcissism are associated with high levels of activity within the behavioral activation system, while Machiavellianism is associated with a great activity in the inhibition system. Okay, so narcissism and psychopathy equal approach tendencies including extroversion, social behavior, and taking action, where Machiavellianism is avoidance tendencies such as withdrawal, and thinking rather than doing. Kind of, kind of, kind of interesting. Kind of, you have to think about it, chew on it a little bit, you know? Just, it's not gonna be like straight, clear, and understanding. You really gotta concentrate on this subject. Even I do. I'm like, why am I making a video about this? It's complicated. It's hard to understand because we don't talk about it. And I think it could be put into a few persons, people's personalities. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying this is not specific to any one person. But it could explain different things we do see everywhere in our life or on here. But it's not to throw stones. If you see it, then you see it. We're not throwing stones. Okay, so narcissism and psychopathy are more likely to engage in approaching behaviors involving action and socializing. So they're outgoing. But Machiavellians are more likely to emerge, withdraw behavior, and rely on their thinking and intuition. So they're going to hang back a bit. So this is consistent with the profile of Machiavellianism as cunning, calculating manipulators who plot against against others rather than actively violate their rights such as a psychopath would so they're cunning you can even use the word covert they're like hidden so they're the little puppet masters 
but you can't see them doing it because they're just hanging out quietly. That doesn't mean they're not being loud and obnoxious. It's just if they're deceiving and causing problems, it's behind the curtain and you can't see. You know, the magic show is over here with the illusion, but it's over here you should be looking because that's where you see the tricks, what they're actually doing. I got a really big word to use now, and I don't know if I can say it right. Are you ready? Me too. No, I'm not. Alexthemia. Alexthemia. A L E X I T H Y M I A. Help me. So, this is associated, okay, Machiavellianism is associated with this alexthemia, which describes a deficit in naming and understanding emotions. Individuals with alexthemic, who are alexthemic, I've never heard this word. This is an education for me this time, too. Have been described as cold, aloof, out of touch with their emotional experiences. Their experiences are not going to match their emotions. So, I think we can kind of understand actually what that is. When someone's emotions don't match the experience they're having. Yeah, I think we all understand that. Um, it's quite interesting. It's got me thinking a little bit. It's got me thinking. So this alexthemia in Machiavellianism may be a product of a reduced understanding of emotions that arises from a shallow experience in these emotions or deficits in empathy and theory of mind. The evidence suggests that these Machiavellians are individuals who are overly cognitive in their approach to others and themselves, but who are out of touch with emotions generally. So they're out of touch with their own feelings, but they're also out of touch with your feelings. And their reactions will not match the situation. Which, I'm going to do some research how that equals into histrionic. Because, of course, narcissism is a part of the dark triad and you can have Machiavellianism and be a narcissist and because narcissism is not one type they're subtypes you can like match these all up which is kind of interesting kind of makes it more complicated doesn't it makes it even more hard to understand what's going on sometimes so what do we come to this is a personality trait involving a cold, calculating view of others. The use of manipulativeness and deceit to achieve one's goal. Um, their limit in empathy. And both on a cognitive and emotional level, they have reduced theory of mind. Um, they are more inhibited and withdrawn than psychopaths and narcissists, which fits in their profile as being cunning individuals who strategically plot against others in order to get ahead in life and achieve their goals. So maybe there's somebody. Um, pulling strings behind another person. You see that person, but you have someone doing their dirty work it looks like it could be that person doing the dirty work has a goal of their own so they're behind the prop and they're sending out i don't know okay let's make an example here on youtube maybe there's a youtube personality who acts and behaves in whatever particular way and they have someone standing behind them supporting them but quietly what they're doing is sending out hate messages or trolling or doing this and doing that because they themselves are going to get something out of this in the end. There's some motive there. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's education this time for all of us. It really is. Let's see. It's kind of interesting. We're almost there. <sighs> I lost my spot. That's what notes are for.
But I still lose my spot in notes. Hmm. So due to the limited emotional resonance and emotional experience displayed by Machiavellianism people, these individuals may possess an evolutionary advantage in the sense that they will not consider the harm they may cause to others in the pursuit of their goal. Isn't it weird they use the word evolutionary advantage? To consider that because they lack all these traits, it's somehow an advantage? It's interesting. It's not positive. It's not a positive thing they're saying here. They're not saying this evolutionary advantage is positive. But most of us don't possess it. Because we kind of care what other people think and feel. And we're kind of sensitive. And we can read people's emotions. And we can react properly in the right situation with our emotions. And we can consider how other people feel and think different than we do. It's kind of interesting. The lack of moral conscience may be dangerous and in part of the reason why Machiavellianism is also interpersonally aversive and considered one of the dark, the three dark triad personality traits. The Machiavellianism worldview may be associated with numerous perceived advantages. One must question, again, the extent of how happy they can live and how emotionally fulfilled their lives are which it comes into question if they can bypass empathy and they're cold and manipulative it's kind of like well they're still trying to figure this out too if we can't figure it out and we don't know much and the professionals can't it shows it's complicated so in pop culture, characters on TV and movies who were Machiavellianists, which then you can use to think about, oh, now I get that personality trait. So our first example is Tony Soprano from The Sopranos. He is a Machiavellianism personality type. I don't watch House of Cards, so I might say this name wrong. Sorry. Francis... Urquhart. This fictional politician is uber Machiavellian. Tom Ripley from uh, The Talented Mr. Ripley. There is a good example of Machiavellianism. If you, I think most of us have seen The Talented Mr. Ripley and you're like, oh, wow, but that's a Machiavellian. If you like Shakespeare, then you have I go from Othello. You have Becky Sharp from Vanity Fair, the movie, which was a book. Game of Thrones lovers. We have two Macs in that one. We have Lord Varys and Lord Baelish. I'm sorry I don't watch it, so I can't pronounce their names. They are Machiavellians. From Paradise Lost, the character Milton Satan was from dangerous liaisons we remember that dangerous liaisons the marquis isabel de mertuli which was glenn close's character was a machiavellian um francis walsingham in elizabeth which would be elizabeth the first queen elizabeth she had um This is a real life person. It was in a movie, but this, this Frances Walsingham was her. Oh my goodness. What's the word? You know, she had her advisor. He was a Machiavellian and in real life. And now who in modern day politicians were because you have people like Stalin and Mussolini and Pol Pot who are real-life Machiavellians. Vladimir Putin. Yeah. So they are Machiavellian. Same with Napoleon and Henry VIII. 
they were also Machiavellian. So it kind of makes you go, hmm, interesting. Hmm, complicated. Hmm, I need to know more about this. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll just let me do it. But it, it, it's, it's a complicated personality type. It's dangerous. And like I said, it can come through in narcissists. And it can come through in psychopaths. And you can go take a Machiavellian test online. Just type in the words in Google, Machiavellian test. Take one. You might find you get some points. That doesn't mean you're crazy. It just, yeah, it means you have, you know, it's controversial, but it's real. I took the test. I had zero for narcissism and zero for psychopath, but I had two. Two. Because I am able to, like most people, hmm, how do I say this? Because I'm not even sure what two questions were that I got the answer from. Because the test is quite, you know, high out of 100. But I did one out of four. And I got half, so it meant two of the questions I answered dictated that. But it doesn't mean it's accurate. But I'm trying to think what they were because I can read people's emotions and stuff, but it doesn't mean because I've experienced so much in life, I can I can um turn it off when it's gonna harm me so I don't get personally hurt. And sometimes I can think with my head and not let my emotions get ahead of me. Because when I was younger, I always thought with my heart. And that's not actually smart as a person. You kind of need to have some kind of... And because I hold things back, and hold things in. So not everything is necessary to be discussed. Because I'm private and because I have had narcissistic um, encounter that was really harsh. I actually went inside. I'm like, no. So that registered on their scale, but didn't register as an actual Machiavellian. It just registered that I was, I'm able to go in and, um, yeah, you'll find that, that most of us have some of it at some point, but we're talking about kind of more extreme, like to me, the means does not justify the ends. I can't turn my feelings and emotions off t to get where I need to go if it means hurting people I, I can't unfortunately and it's a bit of a downfall because I give more of myself than I can or should give but then what happens at some point that shuts off and I say stop I can't give anymore because I gotta have something for myself but I hope you you enjoyed this evening of education. No funny voices, because it, it would be too hard to give my funny voices. Um, or make this hilarious, because it's so complicated topic and subject. But we'll be back again with another topic in the series of education. We will be having, actually, an education. And I'm going to talk funny about bullying. Bullies. And what it actually means, and the definition because y'all, that word is getting thrown around and when you throw a word around like that and you don't know what it actually is and you're just spewing it everywhere, it takes the actual meaning away. So when someone really is getting bullied, they're not going to be believed because, oh, you're bullying me because you don't agree with me. Oh, you're bullying me because you this, because you that. That's not what bullying is and we're going to learn with it in our next video. So, subscribe. I'm getting used to saying this. Join me, subscribe. Um, videos go up maybe once or twice a week right now. Sorry, single parent problems. Work problems. Life. This is just a part-time thing, but come on. We'll learn something. Continue to make funny skits. Which show personality types. Which is interesting. And... Understanding the character, what they're actually saying behind their actions. Because what you're hearing from some people, 
is not actually what they're doing. You know, magic show doesn't match the actions behind the curtain. Right. So I'm going to go. I hope you have a good weekend. It's raining. It's gloomy. It's cloudy. So I'm going to go relax for the rest of the evening. I hope you have a good one. And we'll see you.